Welcome to Space Arena, the Ultimate Python Turtle Graphics Game Tutorial Part 9. In this part, we're going to learn how to detect collisions between objects. So, when we talk about collision detection, usually a lot of times what we do, well, I shouldn't say usually, but what I've done in a lot of my previous tutorials is I've used the distance method. So, I've measured the distance from this object to this object. And if that distance is less than a certain threshold, which is half of this size or the radius plus half of this radius. Now in the case of these objects they're all 20 by 20 so half is about 10 so the, the if they're within 20 pixels of each other the center is within 20 pixels you can say you have a collision. Now this works great for objects that are basically either square or round and in this game that would work just perfectly fine. But uh, what I'd like to try is something called Axis Align Bounding Box. And what that'll let us do later is if you want to, you know, customize your game, is to have rectangular objects, objects that are longer than they are taller or taller than they are longer. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Now, I don't know this formula off the top of my head. I actually went and Googled it like a good person. And I came across this page on the Mozilla web on the Mozilla website and I'll put a link down below in the description so the how can I put it so basically what it does is you can see here is you've got a rectangle around your shape so this could be a bomb this could be an enemy whatever it is and if they touch you can see how that is considered a collision so basically what you're doing is you're looking at the x coordinates, the width, and the height, and there's like so there's this like nice little formula there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and steal this, because good artists borrow, bad artists no sorry, good artists steal, bad artists borrow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the sprite class. And so what I'm gonna do here, now watch watch what watch what happens here. And I could put this at the bottom, doesn't matter, but I'll just put it here for now. Def is collision. Okay. And the reason I put is is because there's only going to be one of two results. It's either going to be true, there's a collision, or it's going to be false. That's all this is going to do. So what I want to do is I'm going to do self and other. Okay. So self is, say, the player, and the other would be an enemy. Or self could be the enemy, and other could be the missile. Okay. So that's what we want to look, look for here. Now. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm just going to take that formula, and I, I'm actually looking at it. I took a picture of it, so I have a. I'm looking at it now. So this is what it would be in Python. So if um, self dot x is less than other dot x plus other dot width. Now keep in mind we we did define a width for our sprites uh, in down oh did we or did we didn't we we did for somewhere i thought that we had width in there okay well then we need to add that so that's good so i'm going to hit self dot width equals 20 and self dot height equals 20. and 20 comes from the fact that in the turtle module that is the default height and width of objects now if you replace your objects with some images later you'll need to change these values but for now, let's use 20 and 20, okay? And then there's and. Now watch what I do here. I'm gonna put a little forward slash. That lets me come down here and continue this line. So self.x plus self, uh, uh, self width is greater than other.x and, okay? Don't put a space after this. Okay, because you get an error. And I, of course, I spelled self wrong. Self. Then the next line is self, self dot y plus other dot y. Uh, sorry, is less than, sorry. Yeah, I made a mistake there. Uh, no, that's fine. That's good. Okay, and self dot y is less than other dot y plus height. And and self dot y plus self dot height is greater than other dot y 
So that's our big long if statement. And then we return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Okay. Now, I think this is going to work. I hope I didn't mess it up. But let's go ahead and try it. Um, well, actually, let's just run this and see if it compiles. Uh, yeah, okay, so no obvious errors at this point. Now, what we got to do, so we have the method, but we haven't used it. So what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to add check for collisions. So what I'm going to do is for sprite in sprites. Okay, so think about that. So for each sprite in every sprite, I want to check and see if it collides with certain other sprites. Okay. So for example, so watch this. If is instance sprite an enemy. Okay, so if it's an enemy, okay, and I'm gonna go if player dot is collision. Notice here there's no underscore. This is this is a built-in method of Python. If it's a collision with the enemy or with the sprite, sorry. So that means the player has collided with an enemy sprite. So I'm just going to say player dot x equals zero, player dot y equals zero. So we'll send the player back to zero zero. So let's test that. See if it works. Okay, we got an error naturally. Enemy is not defined. If is instance sprite enemy. Uh, did I make an enemy class yet? I did not make an enemy class yet. I just made it into a sprite. So let me go ahead and fix that real quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy the player thing real quick and go ahead and make up an enemy class. So class, oops, I'm going to paste that enemy and it's going to be x and y. Otherwise, the enemy acts as a regular sprite. So then I'm going to say enemy equals enemy. Okay, so I've made an enemy class. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that. Okay, we got an error. Height is not defined. So line 74. So let's go ahead up to our sprite class. Say, ah, should be other dot height. Okay. And hopefully some of you saw that before I did. Okay, so let's see what happens when I touch the enemy. Okay, well, nothing happened. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, that was freaky. Uh, okay, so you can see how some the collision is not working. So this just tells me that my formula is wrong. So let me go ahead and compare that. Again, I have a picture of it. That's why I'm not switching back to it on the screen. Um, so it's self x is greater than, ah, that's, that's the first mistake. Self x is less than rectangle plus width and self x plus self width greater than a rec 2 and self y yeah it's less than the height and okay so let's go ahead and try that so again this is the process you know nothing nothing ever works the first time let's just and let's go ahead and okay so you can see i hit the enemy i'm going to test that i want what i want to do is i want to test it from different directions to make sure it's working but it should work if it works from one i'm going to come in from the top now Okay, so that worked. Okay, and, you know, the collision's not gonna be 100% accurate because the, the player does rotate and it gets a little bit thinner at some point. But you can see how that's basically working. So now, I'm gonna, I'll put this down in the comments below so you can just copy that and paste that because it's kind of a mess to, to type in. But, uh, so we can see how basically that little method lets us check for collisions, okay? So, Let's go ahead and do if is instance sprite. And let's do power up. Okay. And if player dot is collision. 
uh, with the sprite. I'm not sure what we want to do with the power up. Uh, let's do sprite dot x. Let's just move it just so we know that we've done something with it. Uh, let's just move to 100, 100. Even though we'll do we'll do something worth it later. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now we don't have a, we don't have a power up class, so we need to go ahead and create that. This is another reason why we created classes, and we could have done it a little differently, but classes just make things easier. So power up. And so for now, it's basically just a copy of the sprite class, but we will have some different things to do with that later. And I'm going to make my sprite a power up. Let's go ahead and run that. And OK, so you can see how the power up moves. So just again, we're just testing the collisions. OK, so that. And now let's do something really cool. Uh, let's do now let's take care of what happens if it hits the missile. Now this is going to be probably a little bit more, maybe a little bit more interesting. So in the case of an enemy, okay, if missile dot is collision with the sprite, So let's go ahead and just move the sprite to negative 100 dot y equals negative 100. Let's just move it to negative 100, 100. And then if the missile collides with a uh, power up, okay, let's move that to plus 100, negative 100. Let's go ahead and test that and see if we can start shooting things. All right, and okay, so it kind of works. Now, what do you notice there about the collision? Now, watch this. Now you see this also. There's like some kind of bug. Okay, and this is this is the process. So, what what are some of the things that we see happening? And some of the things that we see happening are that the collision is registering really early, so before the weapon even gets to the object. And the second thing we see is that this thing keeps resetting because actually the weapon is still sitting there, it's just not being rendered. So we have two things to fix. Now the first one is pretty easy. Um, the missile, if you recall, when we rendered it, we set its size to 20% of the regular size. So 20% of 20 is 4. So the missile height equals 4 and its width equals 4 also. So let's go ahead and test that. Okay, so oops. So you see how the collision is going to be a little bit tighter now. Oops. <laughs> okay. Now the other thing you see also is the missile keeps going. Um, so we want to get rid of that. We want to fix that. So we're just fixing each thing as we go. And in this case, if there is a collision, we just say missile dot reset. Because we made that nice little reset method for it. Missile dot reset. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that. Seems like it's working. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And then they said the other thing that we got to fix is where the missile hit here, but it's still actually sitting there hidden. So that's why we have this weird effect going on. So we need to check first if there's a collision, and we also need to check if it's active. If missile dot state equals active and there's a collision. And if missile.state equals active and there's a collision, then we do this. So I think that fixes everything. Oops, missed that. So you see how you can get pretty close, but if you don't actually hit it, oops. 
So now the game is actually kind of getting to be a bit more interesting, I think. Alrighty. And we probably the last did we do a collision power up on the player? Okay, we did that one and Okay, and we did do that. Okay, so now we have all of the basic collisions working. Okay, so just do a quick review. We are using the it's called Axis Aligned Bounding Box Method, AABB Collision, where we check the boundaries of the height and width of the object. And again, there's the formula. Again, I'll copy it and put it down below because that's it's easy to mess up. And then in our main game loop, because we got to check every time through, we update the sprites so that updates our location and everything. And then we check each sprite against different objects. So in the case of enemies, we check, okay, is this sprite an enemy? If so, check against the player, check it against the missile. Is this sprite a power up? Check it against the player, check it against the missile. Okay. So what's nice now is what I could do is I could go ahead and create oops, a second enemy. Okay, and I'll put that at negative 100. And I'll put it one, I can go the other way. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a second power up. I gotta call it, and everything has to have its own name. And power up two, power up two. And we'll put that at negative 100. And we'll put that negative and negative. Okay. So then if I add that to my sprites list, uh, we got there enemy two and sprites dot append enemy oh, sorry power up two now we can have multiple objects running okay and then because we programmed it because the way we programmed it no matter how many objects we have we don't need to do anything separate you know we can have a hundred enemies in there okay and so now the game's starting to kind of come together a little bit oops Oh, I didn't. I thought I fixed that. So let me go ahead and fix that real quick. Um, I thought I fixed that in the last video, but notice how when I fire, it, it goes uh, uh, again. Um, so let's see here, fire. Ah, okay. So in the fire method for the missile, I got to do this. So if self dot state uh, equals ready, okay. So I can only fire the missile if it is ready. So that was my mistake there, sorry about that. So let's go ahead and run that one more time. Because I only want because I only want to fire one missile at a time. Oops, missed. Okay, good. And we don't want to shoot our powers, but we can. But all the collisions work and exactly as expected. So kind of the game is starting, really starting to come together a little bit now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end that there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for updates.